Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Brunonia, even if never before, please pray with me. We, Van Wickles travelers, stand together, forever changed by our shared walk through a gate that first opened to receive us and now is opened again to send us forth, ever true to this hallowed ground at First Baptist, Brunonians. Pilgrims on College Hill's path of centuries, imbued with eternity's visions, fused with fierce iconoclasm, yet indebted to tradition and scholarship, whose metric is both transformation and compassion, Brunonians. Dancers of engagement, proposal, delight, defiance, dazzling intellect and gentlest gestures, Brunonians. Today, simply, we are the deeply grateful and raise a common prayer as of old, this beloved class of 2015 arrives anew, bearing ever true offerings of gratitude, of learning and memory, of substance and new articulation of a rising generation's motto of In God We Hope. We call to mind on this commencement day our many family members who cannot join our celebration, separated from us by illness and even death, but held close in our hearts. On this day of rejoicing, their dearness near and bright, even as they are just out of view. We're especially mindful of our honored classmates who go before us in death, Dana Dordeville, Mark St. Louis, and Stephen Rodriguez, lost too soon to our circle, their, their loss diminishes our joy, and we hold their memory sacred, their place in this Brunonian family circle always bright. Strangers once, we clasp one another's hands dearly. College Hill, once enigmatic, is now a known daily labyrinth of study, research, culinary adventure, and deep friendship. At all hours, in all weather, in myriad pursuits, we trammel paths and shuttles from Barris and Hod Holly to Sydney Frank, to the Sci-Li and back, from health services with new tape to the OMAC, practicing ballroom steps from Granoff to TF Green and then back again to Alumni, joining that dancing circle of tinfoil friends on the way to Metcalf spouting Shakespeare's couplets on the green while balancing between the trees somehow, reading texts, chalk, and campus posters immediately while reading morning mail rarely, <laughs> delighting each spring in Dave Binder on Riston, or staring speakers in performance in Solomon in Sales and Granoff, pursuing and computing, writing, 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 speaking fluent Brunonian, that dazzling dialect of transparent letters, bright, 
TAPS, BRCC, UCS, OIP, CIT, BDH, UFB, BCSC, SWDC, GLBT, BMSC, UH, you know more. <laughs> These are the visa stamps on your Brunonian passport, a sojourn that changed almost everything about you and about us, even the way we talk. In our lingering dreams as we leave, keep clear the midnight strands of the Hutching Vodi, the shout of the coxswain at dawn on the seaconk, of the a cappella arch sings and spoken word, of the silence of contemplative practice and the green's distant tones of bagpipe and drums. Keep bright the quiet green's blaze of daffodils and magnolias, Wilson's purple haze of red buds, the inches and miles of Brunonia's halls, even the acres of pizza. These streets, these fields, these books, these labs, these faces, may they be ever with us. Our commencement here at Brown is always honored amid the nation's honoring of Memorial Day. And we too remember with gratitude those whose lives served and offered the best sacrifice that can ever be given in loyalty to a nation. We pray compassion for grief of their families, and we pledge to anchor our appreciation for this in compassionate and thoughtful citizenship. May our nation's abiding commitment be ever to the good, and may we never take for granted those who are asked to provide for our national protection and service. May the learning of this great university always be directed to the amelioration of injury, conflict, crisis, calamity, that exact still too dear a human price. Infuse our work with compassion's imagination. May we perseverate in generosity that Earth's insults will melt in the warmth of healing discernment, the doing of the good. And lastly, we offer gratitude for all those whose gifts and generosity meant our good, our beloved families, Brown's amazing benefactors, the large and good family of the world and of this community of Providence in Rhode Island, for our faculty, scholars who through their science and art deepened the human gifts that we have brought to make of them incision, even peacemaking and innovation, we hope of them that they will rescue and shine in the, years in the years to come. May this, the rising generation of new Brunonians, finds life, find life's purpose in their capacity to see and to cherish coexistence in the care of a good earth, building vocations with the planks of justice and loving kindness. May blessings abound, and together, may we be a blessing in the life of the world you love. Blessed Brunonians, this day and always. Amen. Please be seated. By the authority vested in me by the Charter of Brown University and the Board of Fellows of the Corporation, I hereby declare the 247th commencement of Brown University convened. Good morning. Welcome to this historic place on this absolutely glorious day. These will be your very last academic exercises as Brown undergraduate students and the commencement of your distinguished careers as alumni of the great Brown University class of 2015. We are here in a place that has long been part of Brown's history. This meeting house was built in 1775 and it has deep ties to the university. The purpose of the building was explicitly stated at the time of its construction and is noted on a plaque inside. And it reads, for the public worship of Almighty God and also for holding commencement in. 
With a few exceptions, Brown commencements have taken place here ever since. In its early years, the building was large enough to accommodate the entire student body, the faculty, staff, family, friends, as well as many interested members of the Providence community. Obviously, times have changed. The college has grown enough so that we have to hold this graduation on the lawn of the meeting house, and even then we can't accommodate your family and friends. Fortunately, technology has progressed to the point that people can watch this ceremony on big screens positioned on the main green. And I say fortunately because this is truly the single most important part of this very long day. This is when your degrees are actually conferred, so your families need to see this. But before I grant your degrees, I want to ask you to do something. I want you to take a minute and I want you to think about the following question, which is, what are the most important lessons you're carrying away from Brown? The knowledge that will most enrich your life and the many lives you will touch going forward. Now, there are many possible answers to this question, of course, and I'm sure you can think of you know, ma many more than I can even, but I want to single out one that I think is especially important at this point in your lives especially. This is the ability to make choices, the kinds of choices that will lead you to what Aristotle called the good life and what the founders of Brown called lives of usefulness and reputation. You are not strangers to choice. For the past four years, you've survived and thrived in Brown's open curriculum. You've had the freedom and responsibility of deciding how to structure your education, how to blend your academic pursuits with everything else you do. Some of these choices have led to glorious successes. Others, maybe to less happy conclusions on occasion. But I expect that even those choices that in hindsight were disappointing have, have helped you learn something new. The truth is that life is an open curriculum. Going forward, your lives will reflect a series of decisions that you make for yourself, where to live and work, whether to make a career change. And much like a brown education, your paths will not be straight. I can guarantee you that at least one of you who's initially going into finance or consulting, and I know there are a few of you out there, will decide at some point in your lives just to ditch it all and join the Peace Corps. I can also guarantee that at least one of you who was involved in the Occupy Wall Street movement during the first year of college will find yourself someday occupying an office on that very street. There's nothing inherently good about following a linear route through life, and I hope that you take from Brown the confidence to make bold choices and the wisdom to know when it's time to make a change. The transition from college to the real world forces you to make many choices, and I've been talking to many of you about them in the past months. Whether to take that overpriced apartment in Brooklyn or that even more overpriced department in San Francisco, <laughs> enroll in a specific graduate program or accept a specific job offer of the many that you have received or will receive. <laughs> These choices seem of paramount importance at this point in your lives, and they are. But I'll tell you, these are not the choices that will define your lives. When we speak of the good life, a life of usefulness and reputation, we mean much more. And I think it boils down to three ideas, all of which involve choices you will make, questions you'll be confronted with throughout your lives. I can't answer these questions for you, but at least I can articulate them. First, a good life requires resources. Grinding poverty limits the human spirit. But money, although important, is a means to an end. As a graduate of an elite American university, you are poised to be wealthier than the vast majority of the world's population. Throughout your lives, you'll be asked to strike a balance between doing well for yourselves and your families, a fine objective, 
and giving back to the world with a generous spirit. So how will you choose to strike this balance? Second, a good life hinges on making ethical decisions, or in plainer language, doing the right thing, often in circumstances where it's all too easy to get it wrong. I'm sure all of you think of yourselves as ethical people and that you're right to do so. But we live in a very complex world where doing the right thing is often not nearly as clear cut as we would like it to be. Getting it right involves making full use of your human capacities, of reason and intellect combined with compassion and thoughtfulness. This is a process. Every choice you make is guided by and contributes to your own personal ethical scaffolding that will inform your choices in years to come. Will that ethical scaffolding that you build lead you in the right directions? Finally, living a good life means being willing to act on your convictions. It's really easy to identify problems in the world. It's another to have the courage to act on that knowledge and to make change where it's needed. Yes, we all know about the threat of climate change, but what positive steps will each of you make to address this threat? Yes, we all see that there are deep injustices at play in the United States as there are in countries around the globe. But trouble spotting isn't good enough. What actions will each of you take to create peaceful, just, and prosperous societies? Now, has Brown taught you how to live lives of usefulness and reputation? Perhaps not explicitly. Brown has no required courses in ethics. And unlike in its early days, no mandatory daily chapel attendance. But we are a community that supports discussion and at times fierce intellectual debate on matters of conscience. We're a community that fosters mutual respect and caring between people with very different points of view. And we're a community that encourages its members to translate knowledge and ideals into action. And if we've done these things well, we've done more than enough to put you on the paths to good lives. So members of the class of 2015, I hope that the knowledge and experience you've gained here in and out of the classrooms has helped you develop the informed convictions, the compassion, and the courage that will guide you as you move forward in your lives of usefulness and reputation. And now comes the important part. Fellows, I'm addressing you. Sokii onorondi, uenas quos agrodem baccalarii, idoneos comperimus vomis presentimus, et eos ad hongradum promovere liciat rogamus. Thank you. You're not done yet. You're not done yet. No. Candidoti agradem baccalauri auscultabunt, which means, will the candidates for the bachelor's degree please listen attentively? <laughs> now I get to sit down. Octoritati mihi commissa, vos agradem baccalaurii admitto, omniaqua iora ac privilegia hunkradem pertinenti vobis concido. In huius rei testimonium diplomata westris conglegis in collegii gramine tradem. Congratulations. You may now stand and move your tassel to the left side of your mortarboard. Please stay put while the platform party gets off the stage. Thank you and congratulations.